before we get started, get okay, weather channel, do you think maybe you could pick more appropriate names for storms? I mean, yeah, we get you trying to be cute and all by naming them like Gandalf and Khan and whatnot, but Gandalf wasn't a badass storm. Khan didn't have much of a wrath, and well, I don't know what to expect from Nemo, because I mean, the name roughly translates to no one. Or it could have been a reference to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, or an animated disabled clownfish. And look, we got a foot of snow from Nemo, and you would expect nothing from Nemo, huh? Right? So, I mean, it's not like you can predict which storms are going to be more powerful and pick those more badass names for those storms, right? Right? I'd say leave the storm naming up to the National Weather Service, okay? Thanks. Bye. Okay, now that's done and out of the way, we can get to the meat of the video, which is a things that I've been into sort of video, because I've been seeing them around, and I like them, I like sharing what I'm into with you guys, and I like keeping lists, because it helps keep me organized. And I might make this a thing, we'll see how it goes. So first things first, I recently watched The Raid Redemption from Gareth Evans, it's an Indonesian action film, and I'm not usually one for foreign films, and I'm not really an action buff, not like an Expendables Rainbow sort of guy, but... I, I really like this, particularly because of how it involved the Indonesian martial arts fighting style of Pencak Salat. If I totally botched the name, I'm sorry. And another thing I enjoyed was how the action, it wasn't choppy, it wasn't shaky cam, it wasn't, you know, quick cuts. The action held, and there was some really brutal stuff in here. Um, and I'm surprised, that, you know, it held for those shots, but a very well done action film, for all I'm concerned. And another film I saw recently was Ty West's The Innkeepers, which is a New England-based ghost hunting horror indie sort of film. For what it was, I definitely liked it. I saw how it played with some conventions, and you know, it was slow, you know, moments. So I can, you know, definitely see the, the acclaim and criticism it's got. But I definitely enjoyed the film for what it was. As for books, I'm sure you guys know by now that I love reading, particularly because last year I set a Goodreads goal of 100 books, and I bested it by 9, so this year's goal is 115. I'm on 7 books so far, so don't worry, I'll make it. First things first, Jenny Lawson's memoir, Let's Pretend This Never Happened, a mostly true memoir, of course. I really liked her writing style, her sense of humor, what have you, and particularly because it also highlighted the fact that not everyone growing up in the U.S. has the same kind of lifestyle. For example, one of the things she did in high school was she artificially inseminated the bull. Very fun, I know. And I'm also highlighting this because she's starting a tour for the paperback release of her memoir. Uh, it's gonna be beginning next month, thereabouts. And one of those stops is near me, so I'm gonna try to go and say hi, and I'll probably bring you guys along if I do. So, look forward to that. Recently, I finally got through J.K. Rowling's The Casual Vacancy, which I quite enjoyed, particularly because of like the soap opera sort of feel. I think that might have been because of the huge cast of characters, you know, everyone was like, interconnected, and what have you, like, you know, relations, and friends, and everything like that. And also how J.K. was able to give each character a unique sort of voice. I mean, not everyone had a solidified physical description so I couldn't make you know, a mental image, but I, I quite enjoyed how, how she gave a voice to each character and how she also explored like, the financial backgrounds of the characters in different classes and what have you. I, I definitely like that sort of novel. I've also recently been getting into Oliver Potch's The Hangman's Daughter novels. Now, it's set in 17th century Shanghai, Germany. It's historical fiction, and it follows the town's hangman as he basically tries to solve various murders. The first novel was he was trying to save the town midwife from being murdered for basically being a witch. So it was like, you know, a witch hunt sort of thing. And one of the things that it does that I really like um, is how it explores the changes in the medical field, how it's how 17th century medicine is moving from like quack medicine, like bloodletting, to you know herbs and potions and that sort of thing, which you know the town kind of considers witchcraft, to what we now know to be modern medicine. And you know it also also explores like the financial backgrounds and uh, gender roles as well in 17th century Germany. And last but not least, I've been getting into The Unwritten. It's published by Vertigo and it's by Mike Carey and the art is by Peter Gross. Think of it this way. J.K. Rowling had a son, bases her novels on that son, then she disappears, the son, you know, rides her famous coattails, and then one day he discovers in his mid-twenties as a burnout that, oh my god, my mom was battering a international cabal that's working to control the power of literature, and I can use magic to defeat them. Yeah, maybe a little crazy, but it, it really blends or blurs the line between fiction and reality in the world of the graphic novel pretty well, which which I definitely like. I'm waiting for that moment where it'll just suck me in. Not literally, mind you, like, you know, Thursday next. But, 
I'm waiting for that moment. So hope, hopefully, hopefully it'll come soon. And in terms of other things that have been going on with me, I'm still doing stuff for the anglerfish, still sending out applications. And as the Oscars here are in about two weeks, I still have to solidify my picks. I mean, I don't really know who I'm going to give Best Actress to. Is it going to go to Jennifer Lawrence for her role in Silver Linings Playbook, which I really loved? Or is it going to go to Kevense Wallace, who I also loved in Beast of the Southern Wild, which is a really good film. Both of those were really good films. I, uh, those are my top two picks right now for that category. I don't know. I shouldn't be stressing out about Oscar picks. They're Oscar picks. I don't get to decide them. I just pick who I think is going to win. Hopefully I'll do better this year on my Oscar mix. But expect something like that or here or on my blog, and then followed shortly by oh my god, so and so was snubbed. <laughs> so that's something to look forward to by the end of the month thereabouts. So DFTBA, LLZ, and for those of you celebrating, have a very nice Singles Awareness Day or Valentine's Day. I'll probably get some chocolate for myself regardless. <laughs> Bye!